From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. A Montana community opens its arms to a family fleeing Ukraine. No way, that sounds like a fairy tale. Plus, a Stillwater County business is making waves this summer after flooding sunk profits last June. Probably one of the most amazing jobs you could ever have. Ever. And an update on some Wyoming wrestlers who survived a bear attack last fall. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Wednesday, July 26th. I'm Augusta McDonald. Fire season already underway in eastern Montana. Crews now battling a 3,500-acre wildfire east of Broadus, issuing pre-evacuation orders for people living along Highway 212. That's from mile marker 90 through 100. The Haydraw fire was 30% contained by 8.30 last night, 10 hours after it was first reported. The Powder River Sheriff's Office wants motorists to stay off the highway in that area if possible and to be wary of firefighting vehicles. There were some concerns last night about high winds and dry conditions potentially aiding in the spread of that fire. Stay locked on KTVQ.com for the latest updates. Scorching temperatures of late aren't only causing headaches for firefighters. Police officers, especially canines, are struggling in the summer heat. In fact, a police dog recently died in Houston after being left in a patrol car with the engine switched off. As Q2's Andrea Lutz learns, Billings Police are taking precautions to make sure that never happens here. It might look like another day on patrol for Billings officer Caleb Schultz and his canine partner Chevy. I keep a pretty close eye on him. But as the summer bears down on Billings, it's kind of stressful. Officer Schultz has another worry on his mind in addition to scoping out crime. Well, that's sus. Worrying about him all the time. He's, he's high maintenance for sure. As incidents of canine deaths and hot cars surface this summer, Officer Schultz gives us an understanding of protections in place for Chevy. Heat sensors all over the car. So they got sensor probes in the front, kind of where the uh, divider is, and then there's one in the back. All those connected to a monitor delivering real-time temperatures to him. So I just keep an eye on it. But beyond that, there's but more technology window roll down. his patrol car comes equipped with. In the event that the AC malfunctions in there or something happens once it reaches a certain temperature. The car's siren sounds an alarm. And then it rolls his window down if it's not down already and kicks that fan on to start blowing air into the kennel there. All of those backups reportedly failed in both Texas and Georgia cases recently. And even when they work, Chevy needs more attention during the heat. You know, we gotta factor in the ground temperature. You know, we have shoes on, he doesn't. Sometimes the extreme heat means putting Chevy's life as a priority over tracking criminals. Last year we had to uh, track a guy down by the river in the middle of summer and it was in the 90s that day too. Um, by the time we got to the point, we had to walk to where they last saw the guy and then start our work there. By the time we got there, he was already gassed. But it's what Officer Schultz does to keep his partner safe. Is this gonna be optimal to get him out? And is he gonna be able to perform the way he's supposed to in this kind of weather? In Billings, Sandria Lutz, MTN News. Thank you, Andrea, for that report. Yes, yeah, definitely concerned for city police and for anybody whose pets are outside in these temperatures, um, especially the asphalt and the pavement, which gets very ah. way hotter than the air temperature. Yeah, and that's a good point. In fact, we got something to show you on that. Uh, yeah, you got to watch out for the pooches. I know a lot of folks walk their dogs, which is what you got to do, but it's so hot out there. Uh, you got to you got to watch out for that pavement, like Augusta said. Try the five second rule. What you do is you take the back of your hand and you lay it on the pavement. And if you can't hold your hand there for five seconds, that means it's too hot for your dog to walk on. So have them walk on the grass or the earth. Uh, keep it cool indoors. Find a good cool place for them to be able to rest and watch where they are. Limit outdoor time and never leave them in the car. So so get a uh, good FYI there. It's still, even though it's cooling down out there, it's still going to be very, very hot. Yesterday, just a little cooler than the day before. We're, we got up to about 96. Our overnight lows is still very mild at night too. We were a good six degrees above the norm. It's been very dry out there. We've had some storms roll through, just no measurable weather, weather uh, rainfall r rather. So we're still just over about a half an inch for the month. And so we're still digging a hole in terms of where we should be for the month. But our saving grace has been a very wet start to the first half of the year. So we're still uh, well over three inches above the norm at this time of the year. Not a whole lot of rainfall on the forecast for the next couple of days. Maybe as we get into Friday, Saturday, a better opportunity. 68 right now at the airport. Humidity up to 43%. Winds out of the south about seven miles an hour. Uh, temperatures in the 50s and 60s and some 70s to start. Highs today in the 80s and 90s. We're not anticipating any triple digits today, so we are getting cooler. 
Uh, but it's going to get hot again this weekend. We'll take a look at that and more with the main forecast come up. All right, Miller, thank you so much. Sure. And new this morning, U.S. Marine veteran Trevor Reed, the man famously released in a 2022 prisoner swap with Russia, is recovering today in a military hospital in Germany after getting injured while fighting for Ukraine. He is expected to recover after suffering a concussion and lacerations. Former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, who helped to negotiate the prisoner swap that brought Reed home, said in a statement, quote, It is important to make sure Trevor Reed receives the best possible care so he can return safely to his family. Reed's situation is just another cruel reminder of the brutality of this war in Ukraine. More than six million people have fled the country, some ending up in places they never expected to live, like Miles City, Montana. Q2's Alina Howder shows us how that community is making sure a family feels more like neighbors than refugees. Sergey Cott has built a life in Montana, more specifically here in Miles City, where community resources have given him a stable job here at Miles City Sanitation. This is all after he fled war-torn Ukraine with his family last year. Yeah, this is my big boy, number 35, that I drive every day. Sergey Cott never thought he'd be driving a garbage truck in Miles City. It's not going to be little. <laughs> But anything can happen when you flee your war-ravaged country. When we were heading to, towards the highway, we saw already like burnt tanks uh, on the sides and uh, like soldiers all over the place. We got very lucky that we made it because, you know, around uh, every turn that, that could be death there for us. Montana was his first choice when finding a new home because of a very personal connection. More than 20 years ago, I was uh, an exchange student in Rosebud School. And uh, I had a really a great experience there. I got uh, really blessed with the host family. That host family, among many others, have helped the Cots not just survive, but thrive. My route is just uh, in city. Community members found them a home at no cost, donated necessities, and most importantly, his neighbor found a way for Sergi to provide for his family. And there was a person like sitting uh, uh, next to him and told him about uh, all the job service uh, and he got a CDL through here. here. And uh, when he came and told me about this kind of opportunity, I was like, no way, that sounds like a fairy tale. It wasn't a fairy tale, but reality. And a program he qualified for through Miles City Job Service. He's gonna be the next boss of job service. <laughs> <laughs> Allowing him to earn his commercial driver's license. We were able to help him with, with things like rent and clothing for his training. He, he took his training in the middle of winter, so we were able to help with boots, winter coats, gloves, all those things. I got my exam taken and passed it to February 23, and fe February 27, I was already in sanitation working. So I haven't wasted even one day. A man who appreciates life and a place he's thrilled to be back in. Yep. As I told you, it's my second home. In Miles City, Alina Howder, MTN News. Thank you, Alina. Here in Billings, federal leaders are learning more about the missing and murdered indigenous peoples crisis. The Not Invisible Act Commission, founded by Interior Secretary Deb Holland, held a listening session at the Billings Hotel and Convention Center yesterday. Families shared their heartbreaking stories of loss. The commission hopes to take information back to D.C. and use it to make better laws and put a stop to the crisis. Local MMIP advocates did their part and now they wait for something to get done. This is a step in any direction. I don't know if it's going to lead to any improvements. Really hopeful that they listen. There's got to be change. My, my prayers and my hopes are that, that they'll begin to listen to this. Billings was the last of seven stops around the country for this federal commission. This morning, we're learning new details about this week's prostitution sting in Bozeman. It turns out a Belgrade school trustee and a Bozeman high school football coach were among the 18 men arrested for patronizing a prostitute. School trustee Brian Heck has resigned, while coach Mark Nahorniak has been suspended by Bozeman High. They're both accused of patronizing a prostitute through online advertisements that, in reality, were created by police detectives. Both men could face up to five years in prison. A group of advocates are attempting to cap Montana property taxes by adding a ballot measure for voters to consider in 2024. For that to happen, the so-called Ballot Issue 2 will need to clear some legal hurdles. The measure would base property's assessed value on what it was in 2019, then limit any increases in value to no more than 2% per year. Last month, Attorney General Austin Knudsen's office ruled Ballot Issue 2 was legally insufficient and could not go forward for signature gathering. That decision is now being challenged in the Montana Supreme Court. 
the future of Montana belongs to those who, who can afford to live here. And without a change in our property tax system, uh, that future won't include many of us because they know that if Montana voters get a chance to sign this, they will sign it and they will vote for it. Knutson's office argues the measure violated a rule that constitutional amendments can't make multiple substantive changes and that the language was ambiguous. So it was, quote, impossible for voters to understand and measure what they are voting for or against. It will likely be several weeks before the Supreme Court rules in this case. We're learning new details this morning about the woman killed by a grizzly bear near West Yellowstone over the weekend. Amy Adamson lived in Derby, Kansas. The 48-year-old was jogging on Buttermilk Trail early Saturday morning when she was attacked. The trail and surrounding area in the Custer Gallatin National Forest will remain closed through August 25th. State wildlife officials are no longer looking for the attacking bear. In Wyoming, four college wrestlers who survived a grizzly bear attack are honored at Cheyenne Frontier Days. Brady Lowry and Kendall Cummings were pretty banged up after their encounter with the bear in the Shoshone National Forest last October. The pair and their teammates, Oren Jackson and August Harrison, who helped Lowry and Cummings to safety, were recognized for the bravery they exhibited and their commitment to friendship. Brady was able to make it back to the mat this year, even taking fifth place at the national tournament. Cummings continues to recover and says he'll be back next year. It's a busy tourism season for businesses along the Stillwater River, showing a rebound from last year's floods. Q2's Jackie Coffin makes a run down the river to see how one family managed to stay afloat. There are sections of the Stillwater River where you can see the evidence of the flooding. Trees torn up, channels of the river have changed completely, but you can still find a lot of fun rafting down. If you've driven up the Stillwater River corridor near Absorkey, you probably recognize this big red bar. And if you've stopped in to take a float with Adventure Whitewater, you'll know Merrick Rosin. I want everybody to point downstream for me. My business is Adventure Whitewater. Never trust your guide. It's uh, 30 years of celebrating this summer. Probably one of the most amazing jobs you could ever have, ever. When I first met Merrick, it was under different circumstances. They actually are evacuating everybody out. In 2022, when historic flooding hit his barn and his business. Floods were devastating to my business, but we bounced back. Merrick started floats again last summer after floodwaters receded. But this summer he's on a mission to show the still water is back and as fun as ever. All right, Grayson, you ready? Guiding boats down the river twice a day is Merrick's daughter, Chloe Rosin. Every day out here on the water, you just, you always feel good. You're hard pressed to have a bad day on the water and I think that's just what makes it so special. Chloe points out fan favorite features. Let's go. But also where the river has changed from the floods. This channel is pretty new since the floods. We used to go river left and we're currently going river right. Boats full of visitors are making up trips to Montana canceled last year. We are from Bismarck, North Dakota and we are just on a girl's truck. Yep. Keeping guides busy. Had a lot of folks from Kentucky and North Carolina. It's where I grew up rafting and uh, a lot of the Minnesotas and Dakotas. With Chloe bringing her own expertise to the water, <laughs> Merrick's vision of the river is changing. Adventure Whitewater will stay open. It's time for me to ship my oars and time for the new generation to keep their oars wet. But he knows the Stillwater River, as scarred as it might be, has an untouchable magic that cannot be washed away. Who knows what the future holds, but right now we are 100% going for it. Near Absorky, Jackie Coffin, MTN News.